determining the charge of an aluminosilicate or a silicate. The silicate follows the same principles except without counting the aluminium. Um, so if the aluminium's there, it's probably an aluminosilicate and you can follow this process. If not, you just skip the step where you add the aluminium. Method 1 includes adding the oxidation states of aluminium, silicon and oxygen and multiplying them by the number of each atom present in the aluminosilicate. Any other elements are ignored for this addition for determining the charge just of the aluminosilicate itself, so not the beryllium. So we start with the aluminium. Aluminium is in group 3 and therefore has an oxidation state of plus 3. There's two of them in the aluminosilicate formula, therefore we times it by 2, giving us plus 6 total for the aluminium. The silicon is in group 4, therefore has an oxidation state of plus 4. There's 1 times 6 in the silicate formula, therefore plus 4 times 6 gives a total of plus 24. The oxygen is in group 6, therefore has an oxidation state of minus 2. There's 3 times 6 for 18, times that by the oxidation state of minus 2 for a total of minus 36. Including the aluminium, silicon and oxygen together gives us a total, therefore, of minus 6. Therefore, the charge on the aluminosilicate anion is 6 minus. The second method involves adding the oxidation states of everything except the aluminium, silicon or oxygen. It is usually shorter because it's usually less, but sometimes it's not. It depends whether there's more than three other elements present. In this case, the only other element present is the beryllium. The beryllium has an oxidation state of plus 2 because it's in group 2. There's three of them present, so multiply that by 3. gives us plus 6. Therefore, the total charge of everything except the aluminosilicate is plus 6 in this case. Therefore, since the mineral has an overall charge of 0, which it should as a mineral, the aluminosilicate must have an overall charge the opposite of this of minus 6.